in the last couple of days I've been reflecting a lot on my past relationships, relationships I had with women, the good, the bad, the dramas, the ups, the downs, and a lot of the failures as well, and the struggle that it brought into my life. And I was like, damn, relationships can hurt, right? Dating can hurt, it can be very frustrating. That's why a lot of people escape that whole topic overall. And I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be like, okay, at least I'm learning now. In the startup world, there's this mantra called fail faster. Maybe you've heard about it. Mark Zuckerberg calls it move fast and break things, which makes sense in the software world, right? And that's what I want to talk about. So let's set up. On techtarget.com, they say, what is fail fast? Fail fast is a philosophy that values extensive testing and incremental development to determine whether an idea has value. An important goal of the philosophy is to cut losses when testing reveals something isn't working and quickly try something else, a concept known as pivoting. You try something, it doesn't work, you move on quickly, right? And you're not wasting your time and resources on a broken thing. You know, in the startup world, it can mean uh, you have an idea for an online course, right? Maybe you, you have a, a skill set and you want to sell an online course. And instead of like filming each video, like scripting, filming, editing, exporting all of the modules and the videos of the online course, what you do instead is simply you announce it to your audience. Hopefully you have an audience or maybe you run some ads if you don't have an audience and you test. You see, is this relatable with people? Do people want that? Is there a desire? And then if yes, then you build the course. And if not, you pivot, you, you try out something else. And I was thinking, can we draw similarities when it comes to failing fast in dating? Can we apply these principles when it comes to seduction, relationships, connecting with people and meeting women after all? And I would argue, yes. <laughs> Obviously relationships are complex and the more experience you have in relationships, the better it should be in the end, right? So I wanna talk about that. I mentioned before how amazed I am how dudes are very strategic when it comes to their business life. They have systems, they have spreadsheets, they have processes, they have automation, they use AI, right? Especially when it comes to entrepreneurial ventures and people become rich with that. They, they gain a lot of money and wealth through being very strategic and then they have all this wealth and then they often have a very mediocre average relationship because they don't apply the same strategic thinking and thought patterns and trial and error into their relationship and relationship skills. We can break up the dating process into three categories, or three phases, let's say. The first phase is being single, second phase is dating, and the third phase being relationships. And let's go through each one. Phase one, single. And here we have passive single, active single. And you know, as I'm going through this, ask yourself, what stage are you in currently? Passive single means you're not even trying. You're kind of done with women currently, or you might be really focused on your business. Uh, you're in monk mode, so to say. You want to make money, you want to get rich, and then the women come. Okay, if that's a couple of months, that's fine. But if you've been in that mindset for many years, or you may be really heartbroken and you gave up on women, or you have a very toxic view on them, that is a problem, right? You have to get out of that rut, and you have to admit to yourself that Maybe you lack a certain skill set. Maybe you're too much of a nice guy. Maybe you're not have enough authority. Maybe you don't have what attracts women currently and you need to gain a certain skill set to do that. And if you don't want that, well, I guess you can stop watching that channel. But really, be honest. Like, where are you at currently and do you want to end up as a bitter, old, lonely man? Probably not. The other stage of being single is active single. Now you take action, you want to make things happen, you want to get laid, you want to approach women, you want to talk to women, you want to hone your skills as a ladies man, as a seducer, you want to go on dates, you want to get laid. That's great. And you need to be in that phase and you don't have to exit that phase as soon as a woman comes in your life that is like okay girlfriend material. You can extend that phase because probably statistically you're going to end up in that phase again anyway at some point right even if you have a beautiful relationship most relationships fail and i don't mean fail as in they're bad i just mean they end okay most relationships end let's say it like that you're gonna be again in after the relationship maybe in the passive single phase a little bit because you're depressed and sad because breakups suck and then eventually you're hopefully gonna get into the active single phase again 
So everything you learn in that phase, you need anyway. You need to know how to approach, you need to know how to flirt, how to seduce, how to connect, how to communicate, how to get a girl's number, how to ask her out on a date, how to text her, how to be interesting, how to escalate on a date. You need all these skills anyway. So you might as well spend some time in your early years, in your early 20s. And if you're watching this in your 30s and you still don't know what to do, fine, right? You do it now. So you want to fail in this phase as much as possible. You want to approach women and you want to get rejected. You want to go on dates and you want to go for the kiss and she's like weird about it. You want to run out of things to say. You want to embarrass yourself when talking to a girl in the cafe. You want to feel really cringy when you talk to that cute girl at the airport and she's just like, Kind of ignoring you or you know giving you a pity number or whatever can happen like it's good failing is good in that sense that's the whole point of the video fail faster you want to embrace failure and there's, there's another reason why it's actually important to have these skills not just after a relationship you want to have these skills during a relationship because spoiler alert whoever will be your future long-term girlfriend or wife wants a man who would be able to attract other women easily, but is not doing it. He is choosing his wife out of choice, out of abundance, not of out of desperation or lack of choice, right? She needs that in a man to respect you. She doesn't want the guy who has no options. She wants you to be crazy alpha dude. You could fuck all these women, but you're not because you love your wife so much. That is super attractive. Now we're moving into the dating phase. And again, there's different forms of dating and relationships. There's obviously monogamy, but there's also open relationships, different forms of open relationships. There's casual dating, you know, sleeping around. There is having a lover uh, that you meet here and there. There is something more serious. There's all sorts of dynamics. It's also, again, important to try out each of these categories, the open, the casual and the monogamy. And here again, I would make the argument, it is important to fail. It is important to try out different things and assess, is this good for me? Am I investing my resources well here? Does this work for me? Is this amazing for me? I love this, I love open relationships, I love casual dating or I love monogamy or would I rather do the other thing? And so I would suggest do everything once, right? At least in any type of relationship, you will acquire new forms of skills. You will learn stuff when you're with a partner in monogamy than when you approach women on the street. You will learn different emotions about yourself when you're in an open relationship and maybe you know that your girl also slept with another guy than when you are in a monogamous relationship and so on, right? Uh, different skill sets, different emotions, different traumas that might come up for you, different stuff you have to deal with, which is all important for the long run. Remember, we're doing this to become a more solid man, a more complete man, a man who knows himself, who knows his traumas, who faces his fears, who faces challenges in life, deals with them, maybe does therapy. That's the point of that. So we also want to learn about women in general, right? It's easy maybe to seduce a girl. It's very easy to get a number. It's easy to go on a date and have casual sex. It is harder to be in a relationship and actually go deep with a person. You will then encounter certain parts about a person that you didn't see before. I am reflecting on that myself. I was in certain toxic relationships in my life as well. Seeing certain people in a way and then in the relationship it turned out that they're very different, right? We are also faced with a new side of our partner. We might see toxic people for who they are finally, right? For example, narcissists, they they're very charismatic, they reel you in, they're very seductive. And then maybe later into relationships you realize, oh my God, what am I doing here? You, as I said, you start to reflect on your own traumas and insecurities. And when, especially when we talk about insecurities, women bring out your insecurities more than anything else in the world, in my opinion. I'm experiencing a wave of insecurity. You learn what women want, what expectations they have, what they value in the relationships. You learn what they want in sexuality, right? You can go deeper with a partner and uh, you start to differentiate between different women. Different women have different values, different morals, come from different cultures. Obviously it will be different dating a girl from you know, Sweden versus a girl from Russia in the extreme, or a girl from China versus a girl from Brazil or Portugal. It's good to know the difference. It's good to know, oh, this is what's available. This is what's out there. Maybe this suits my personality better than this other culture, this other moral. Uh, maybe we can work together way better if she has this mindset versus a woman from that background usually thinks like that and so on. 
So that's all incredibly valuable experiences you can make by dating different women and trying out different structures of dating. The article further reads, an important goal of the fail fast philosophy is to avoid the sunken cost fallacy, which is the tendency to continue investing in something that clearly is not working because it's human nature for people to want to avoid failure. Classic example, right? I mean, if you ever had a long-term relationship, ask yourself, how long was the relationship and how long should it have been? How much time did you waste? And did you have a sunken cost fallacy that made you keep going? Was it the reason that uh, you stayed too long in that relationship because you thought, oh, but we already know each other. Oh, she already moved in. Oh, but I know her body. Oh, but she knows, you know, what I like, what I dislike. And it, it, we just just try again, try again, try again. And I'm not saying break up with, you know, everybody who, where you have a little bit of a conflict. Very classic with my students. And a horrible feeling to waste so much time to know, oh my God, I should have ended it earlier. But as it says here, it's human nature for people to want to avoid failure, right? I said it earlier, failed relationships, but that's a bad mindset actually. We should, we should eradicate this, this phrase. There is no failed relationships. We got into relationships because we wanted to and because we found it to be positive in the beginning and, and it was positive and we made a good a lot of memories and we loved the person at some point and then things drift apart. And that's okay, and that's part of life. That's what I'm trying to reflect on, right, for myself. Relationships don't fail, they just end. And then you hopefully take the lessons and maybe you cry and feel shit for a while and that's okay as well. And you move on and you learn for the next time. You gained a new skill set. You leveled up, hopefully, if you're not completely broken and you can recover from it. Which is where male networks come in, Ther therapy comes in and just, you know, positive thinking and reflecting and maybe journaling and other stuff. So if you suffer right now, comment below, I'll try to give you some good vibes. So if you've gone through different types of relationships, eventually you'll maybe get tired of that. You will wanna end up in a committed relationship with one girl, monogamous. Maybe you think about marrying her. Maybe you think about having children with her. I think this is where all of this comes into place, right? Where you wanna choose a partner because you made all these experiences and you suffered in the past and you failed a couple of times and you hopefully you failed a lot, you failed really fast, right? You used your years well and you failed a bunch and you tried stuff out and you met different women, you had sex with different women, you went into different forms of relationship with different women and now you're like ready for a committed relationship and you maybe have been before once or twice and it turned out to be not what you wanted and now you know what to look out for next time. Obviously, I, I acknowledge certain things. Uh, there's the paradox of choice. These days, especially with dating apps and Instagram and, you know, we're getting very influenced of, oh, it's so easy to find a partner. We can just quit with somebody. So having a committed relationship is a decision. You just don't end up in one. You actually decide that's what I want to have, firstly. And then secondly, I'm going to work for it. Because obviously just because you made all these experiences in the past, in seduction and in casual dating doesn't mean you're going to be the perfect monogamous committed boyfriend husband father right that's a whole new set of challenges and really the work never ends so it's about realizing that you have to put in the work you have to keep showing up you have to keep improving as a man i'm making these videos because i want to be a strong man i want to inspire you and really i want to build a tribe of strong men in every asset aspect not just assets <laughs> Um, to have a good life. I think the more complete you are as a man, the happier or let's call it the more satisfied your life will be eventually because you are able to avoid the horror, the failures, the heartbreak, the loneliness because you know what you want and you know how to get it. So practically for you, if you're maybe now in the single stage or the casual dating stage, what does that mean? Well, fail faster, right? At the end of the day, we want to be a complete man. The guy who's more complete or back in the startup world, the better CEO, the better founder is usually the one who had the most failures in the past. He made the most lessons. So for you, that will mean doing stuff like asking girls out, going on dates, enter relationships. Maybe you've been afraid in the past to enter certain types of relationships or you are too stuck in your mind of like, either it's this or nothing. You know, I'm not going to do open stuff. I'm not going to be casual. She needs to be mine. Maybe you need to shift your mindset a bit. You also, very important, need to be ready to leave 
a relationship if you know it's not working, if you know you don't have a common future. Breaking up is an incredibly important skill. When we talk about fail faster, that also means realizing this relationship is ending. I got what I got out of it and so did she and I owe it to her to end it, to save her time. You know, maybe she should look for the next guy. Maybe she should take the lesson from this relationship that's been nice but has no future and apply that lessons in her future relationship that will be her husband. That is your duty as a man. You should be thinking like that. You should spend more time outside so you can approach. Obviously the dude who did 500 approaches and failed 400 times, failed, you know, like didn't get the number, but got 100 numbers and then went on 25 dates and had sex with 12 women, will learn way more than the dude who's just sitting behind a computer, chatting with girls on OnlyFans, or trying to DM girls, or trying to swipe, swipe, swipe on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. Obviously the, the first guy will be more interesting, more well-rounded, will have better skills in, in escalation, approaching and flirting in communication. He knows when to put pressure, all that stuff. And you need to learn that, especially if you're not in a situation now where life just solves that for you, right? If you're in college and there's a lot of women, yeah, you will chat with them. If you work coffee store or you work in a clothing shop, you will learn to flirt with girls and role play and you're around female energy. But if you're introverted, if you're an engineer, if you're analytical, if you work in an office with a lot of guys, the problem will be that you don't get this on a regular basis and you even more need to go for it. You need to approach, you need to go outside, you need to make interactions, you need to enter certain hobbies and social circles that have just more women in them. And again, that's part of the work and it's not just about getting laid, right? It's about failing, failing, failing. So ultimately you can have a fulfilling, intimate, trustful, fruitful, wonderful, memorable relationship with a beautiful woman that uh, trusts you and that values you and that kind of sees the work that you put in that makes you stand out right that makes you stand out from the other guys who just didn't put in the work I, i'm a strong believer in the person who puts in the most work in a strategic way combining hard work and smart work will actually win and yeah have the most satisfying life i mean that's what i what i believe in why i'm doing the things I'm doing and that's why you're still watching this video after however many minutes it's been maybe feel like you wasted a little bit of time you have some catching up to do you can book a free call below or we can analyze your situation yeah fail faster you're not failing fast enough probably that's true for other areas in your life but i think it's especially true in your relationship and that's it see you in the next video i can do this with my eyes closed it's so easy. what's up doggy all right he wants to listen as well. You want to listen to my <laughs> Don't bite my face off, please.